Welcome to NLP with Cody G. With Cody G. We go deep into the psychology of ethical selling using neuro-linguistic programming to give tangible strategies for heart-centered business owners to enroll clients so they can get their service out to the world. To the world. All right, guys, I'm going to be talking about a few things sales related here. And for those of you guys that don't know, my name is Cody. Uh, my background before ever getting into sales training and NLP training, I was a manager for a finance firm. And it was an eight figure firm. I was in charge of, I had a sales team of roughly right about 14 to 15 people, about 30 people on the total sales floor, uh, and three managers that were below me. And what I was in charge of doing was helping people understand the sales process. My favorite way to teach people how to sell was to literally bring them in a boardroom, show them their phone call, let them hear it with other people listening and say, hey, this is exactly what went wrong. This is where you lost the sale. This is where the engagement went away. This is where the prospect said something like this, and you completely took them down a different path. This is where you didn't address their question. Maybe this is where you over-talked the sale. Um, there's a lot of different things that can happen on a sales call for you to lose it. And most times, the, the most interesting part that I find is that after listening to so many different people's phone calls, I found that before anyone ever goes in to do the pitch or their offer, if the person says no, it's not because the pitch wasn't strong. It's because the sale was lost way before that ever even happened. So what I hope to do today is give you guys a few tangible things that you can take away and start applying to whatever you sell. My biggest goal before anyone ever considers working with me, make sure this stuff works that I teach. I don't wanna just talk about concepts or theories. I wanna give you something tangible that you can take away from that. So a few things. Number one, going to before we get into any strategy about closing a sale, let's talk about the hardest part that some people struggle with, which is opening the deal. And here's what I mean. Oftentimes, people will come to me and say, Cody, I need help overcoming objections. I need help closing. But what you really need to focus on is actually opening. Because if you can work hard, then your close is going to be easy at the end. So first thing I'd love for you guys to write down or adopt is work hard for an easy close. Meaning you should not have to be that person that's overcoming a bunch of objections at the end. You shouldn't have to worry about your pitch and your offer being so, so strong at the very end because you should be seeding it throughout the call. And you would much rather pre-frame objections during the call than reframe them once that prospect brings them up. So first thing that I like to do when I work with any of my clients is we have to first figure out what do you think and believe about sales and about money. Because here's the thing, a lot of people believe things like you have to work hard for your money. If you're not working hard, you don't deserve the money that you're making. And I had this belief when I first started my own business, and what I found was that I can make a few thousand dollars for a few hours of my time, and something fell out of alignment. I had to reframe that stuff, and I had to do different NLP techniques to help me overcome that and release those limiting decisions, and I learned that I did not need to work hard for my money. I needed to work smart for my money and use my mind to give tremendous amounts of value with the time I spend with someone. So the first thing I like to do is ask people, what do you believe about selling and what do you believe about money? Because if you believe that money is something negative or that you shouldn't be asking for money or talking about money, you're going to bring that energy onto your sales call. Number two is what do you actually believe about selling? And one of the most common things that I've seen working with a few hundred people now is that people believe selling is taking. And if I thought me selling something was me taking, I would feel uncomfortable about selling too. And here's the, the real beauty in that is that if you don't believe that you're giving something, you shouldn't be selling at all. If you think that what you do is taking something away from someone, you should not be selling. The entire premise that I build my business on is ethical selling using neurolinguistic programming. And what I mean by that, if you don't wholeheartedly believe that what you have can either change someone's life or get them a return on their investment, you should not push that product out there and you should work on creating a stronger offer. So this message goes out to the people that do believe that what you have is beneficial for someone that would sign on with you potentially. So here's the thing. First, start to see selling as giving, meaning when I'm selling my NLP certification, I know that I'm giving someone so much value, so much information that is 
far worth far more than the money that they're exchanging for that. Because money, all it really is, is an exchange of energy. Taking money doesn't mean that you're taking it away from someone where they can't afford to put food on their table. It means they're just exchanging some energy with you. You're giving them some of your energy and they're giving you a form of their energy. Different form, but energy nonetheless. So think of your sales calls as, what am I giving this person? Because I know when I'm training someone how to sell, I have a 10-week sales training program, and let's say that I charge someone five grand for that. When I charge them five grand, sure, I'm taking five grand from them, but what am I giving them in return? Having this mindset always keeps me sharp, it always keeps me on my toes, and it always keeps me giving. Because I know with that five grand they're giving me, I'm giving them something that is far more valuable than five grand. It's the knowledge, the tools, and the ability to make hundreds of thousands of dollars over their career, which is why I think that learning how to sell has been one of the best things for my business. Um, Here's another thing. I'm having a monologue talking with myself right now, but it sounds that way on phone calls that I've heard with with, um, clients talking to their prospects as well. If it sounds like a monologue when you hear the phone call back, like you're talking most of the time, something is going wrong. Uh, A very old, basic, general rule is the 80-20 rule. You should be listening about 80% of the time and talking about 20% of the time. Now, the unfortunate reality is that usually that's backwards. People are talking 80% of the time and they're only listening 20% of the time. Where's the danger in that? The danger is that Every moment you spend talking, you're risking over-talking the sale, boring that prospect. Um, And here's the thing. All sales really is, is an engagement game. How can I keep this person engaged all the way until the end? So what I tell people is really understand, if you listen to my voice, you can hear the way that I modulate my tone. You can see the pauses that I might do, or when I slow it down, or really ask a question like, so let me ask you, you're not making that much money in your business, how long do you wanna keep it that way for? And it can really start to evoke that sense of curiosity in someone, not by the words that I said, but by the way it was delivered. So all I'm really thinking on a sales call is how can I keep this person engaged? Uh, Another good tangible way to do that is with a tag question or a tie down question. And I can say something like this, you know, and what we're gonna do together is I'm gonna work in your business to help you build out a sales system that will allow you to enroll more clients with ease. And that's kind of what you're looking for, isn't it? And they'll usually say say something like, yeah, that is, okay, cool, and then I'll move on. But before I move on, I wanna get their feedback. Why? Because I want them to start committing, I want them to start saying yes, and I want them to really get into what I'm selling. Because the way that I see sales, if I need to consciously try to force someone to buy something, It's probably not a good fit for them or for me. The way that I see selling is I want to make this person buy my offer at the end. I don't want to sell it to them. And I'm going to say that one more time. I want them to be the one at the end of this call wanting to buy. I don't want to have to be the one selling it to them. So it's a real mindset shift because most people think that they have to forcefully sell their offer. They talk about all the features, how good it is the results, the benefits, and all that stuff is great, but advanced level selling is where you can have that person wanting to buy without you having to shove it down their throat. And that's what you're looking for, isn't it? So a few things here. Um, I really believe that selling is the highest level of serving, meaning when I sign someone onto my sales training program, I know wholeheartedly that when I sign them on, I'm doing them the best service that I possibly can because I'm going to help them make more money. I'm going to help them release all those weird feelings that they have around selling to allow them to change the way they show up in their business. And when it comes down to it, sales is the one trigger that generates revenue. Bottom line, you got to have other components. You have to have your marketing, you have content and other things that go into it. But the trigger for revenue happens once a sale is made. So the way that I see it, if I can help someone make a decision that's going to change their life, it's actually a disservice for me not to put that out there for people. And the reason why a lot of people feel weird or uncomfortable about selling is because, again, they think they're taking something away from that prospect. So start to tell yourself, what am I giving on this call? How much value am I giving? Ask yourself this as like a pre-sale ritual. 
the, the thing I want to focus on today is your pre-sale ritual. There's a few things that I remind myself of. Number one, how much can I give this person on this call? How much am I going to give this person after this call if they sign up with me? Meaning that you guys have probably heard me speak on Clubhouse, on Instagram, on a podcast, and I can talk a little bit, but there's only so much value I can give talking to myself, just kind of going out of thin air. But when I work with my clients, when we're having a one-on-one -on -one phone call and I'm taking a deep look into their business, that is where the transformation happens. So I know that when I can help that person make a sell, I'm going to help them also create that transformation. So whatever it is that you're offering, remind yourself of that, that there's only so much value you can give someone at a surface level. The real magic happens when you guys work together and put two minds on that person's business and help them brainstorm. Um, a few other things. I tell myself before every sales call, and this is something I've taught to hundreds of people because I believe it's a great mindset to have. This person is going to sign up with me. This person is going to pay in full. And this person is going to pay today. Those are the three things that I consciously tell myself before every sales call. Number one, this person is going to sign up with me. Number two, this person is going to pay in full. Number three, this person is going to pay today. That takes out every objection. It takes out every doubt that I might have. And more importantly, what is it doing? It's not projecting any of my insecurities on my prospect. Like, oh, this person seems broke. I don't know if they can buy today. We've all heard people say that. And it's actually doing a disservice to your prospect to put your projections or to think with your wallet instead of theirs. Because we don't know how bad they can really need what you're, what you're offering. So when I can remind myself of that before every sales call, it allows me to really just get into flow where I can start assuming the sale. And I don't need to actually question, like, does this person really want this? Because when you have those thoughts in your head, when you have even 1% doubt, it's going to be magnified times 10 to the person you're talking to with little micro expressions that you might make if you're on video or the way that your tone might shift when they can hear it on audio or just how your energy changes when you say something, we can feel that intuitively. We pick up on it subconsciously. So we have to be very aware of the thoughts that are going through our head because we let those come out with either verbal or nonverbal communication. And that's when people blow the sale. So I have those, those things in mind. This person's going to sign with me. They're going to sign today. They're going to pay in full. And I am not going to assume anything else until they tell me so. Meaning I'm not going to sit there and say, man, you know what? I don't know if this person's going to be a good fit for it based on their lack of finances. Because then we're going to put in 80% on that sales call. We're not going to fully give that person the attention and the, and the energy that they need and they deserve for investing their time with you. Um, another thing that I believe is that if I'm going to spend any amount of time with someone, whether it's 15, 30, 45 minutes on a sales call, I have every right at the end of that sales call to make an offer, to present it. And here's the same thing that a lot of people, a lot of coaches, they book clarity calls, strategy calls, um, breakthrough calls, whatever, whatever you want to call them. And they still feel uncomfortable. And here's a reason why is because when you offer, I do free clarity calls. The person's most likely getting on that phone, getting on that call because you're offering something free that requires no commitment except for some time. I, I, um, I strategize and I portray everything as exactly what it is. Hey, we can hop on a quick call, see if you're a fit for what I do. And if you are, I'll go ahead and let you know what the investment would be or what the options would be. And that way, guys, there's no surprise at the end of the call when I go to pitch. I don't need to feel weird or bad about me making an offer. I've already told them this is what's going to happen. They don't need to feel uncomfortable like, oh, man, is this guy going to be selling to me? Like, when is a sale happening? They know it's going to happen. And most things in life, people aren't afraid of what's going to happen. They're afraid of not knowing what's going to happen. So think about that. How can I clearly set the expectation and set the framework on this phone call so the person knows exactly what's going to happen? And here's a way that I like to do this. This is word for word what I use in my own script that you guys can start to adopt. I'll say, hey, thank you so much. I'm happy we're hopping on this call today. What I'm going to do is ask you a series of questions because I want to get to know more about your business. What's working? What's not working? And if I think that I can help you, what I'll do is I'll let you know the options for us to work together at the end. And if I don't, 
what I'll do is point you in the right direction of maybe a first step you can take or someone that I think can help you. Does that sound fair? And you would be so surprised what's happened at the subconscious level when I say that. A few things. Number one, I'm setting the expectation of what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you questions about your business to find out what's working and what's not working. Because most people hop on a phone call, on a sales call, and they have no framework or no structure. And there's no flow to it. And it feels like that. So I let that person know I'm going to ask you questions. I'm taking the role of the authority because I'm looking at your business. And it also lets the person know ahead of time when I do go to ask questions like how much money are you making in your business? What are your struggles? It doesn't feel invasive or like I'm interrogating them because I've let them know why I'm doing it. Anytime in selling, if you can explain why you're doing something, you're going to have the most profound effects in what you're doing. So I let, the, I let them know that. The seed's been planted. The expectation's been set. I'm going to ask you some questions and here's why. So later when I ask questions, there's no surprise. I let them know if I think that you're a good fit for what I do or if I think that we're a good fit to work together, I'll let you know the options. I'll let you know the investment, however you want to phrase that for us to go ahead and start working together. What is that doing? It's letting them know, hey, this is not just a random 30-minute call that's going to be a waste of either of our time. The goal here is to see if you're a good fit for what I do. Because again, there's only so much information or so much value I can give on a 30 or 45-minute clarity strategy call. But the real value happens when they sign with me and we can work together and schedule sessions for their business. So I've taken out any uncertainty if this is going to be a sales call and I've given it to them straight and people really appreciate transparency and you just being open. Hey, this is what it is. No pressure. If we don't want to work together, totally cool. And that brings me to point number three. What have I said at the end now? I've said, and if I don't think we're a good fit together, what I'm going to do is maybe point you in the right direction or give you a first step you can take. I've alleviated all of that pressure, all of that stress and their guards are going to start to come down because I've said, hey, if I don't think we're a good fit together, I'm not going to charge you anything. And when you're selling, if you don't think that person is a good fit for you, for example, I was just on a sales call earlier today with someone who is not a good fit for my program. I don't need to explain why they're not. I don't need to um, justify or even try to pitch to that person if I don't think we're a good fit, meaning if I don't think that what I do is going to bring them a return on their investment I'm not going to make an offer at all. And I let that be known from the very beginning. So again, if someone tells you that, like, hey, Cody, if I don't think that what I do is going to benefit you, I'm not going to sell you anything. Like, that's the best thing that you can tell someone because they know you're going to be open with them. You're going to be honest. If I have something that can help you, yes, I'm going to present it to you. If I don't, there's going to be no offer at all and no hard feelings. And I'm still going to try to give you some direction you can take after that call. So... Those are a few different mindsets that I like to have anytime I am on a sales call. And when I do that, it really makes the process a lot easier. It makes it flow better and it makes it more enjoyable for both parties involved. Thank you guys for listening and I'll talk to you soon. Cody's mission is to create the ripple effect because with each person he teaches to sell, that's one more life impacted in the process. Are you ready to get certified in neuro-linguistic programming to overcome every belief that's not serving you to create the new version of you that the world needs and skyrocket the revenue in your business? Check the link in the description for the next step. Thank you, and please leave us a review for some brownie points.